all requests is uh, approved. That's the idea that, you know, pretty much anybody can add stuff um, as long as they're not exactly spamming the system. Um, and so, uh, so far, it has been three of us who have been helping. And uh, I will create this little uh, GitHub organization. If anybody else wants to help, please, by all means, uh, submit pull requests, or um, I can add you to the organization anytime. Somebody on uh, on IRC promised me a logo for it um, tonight. I have no idea what it will be, but let's just add to it. Um, and um, let's see whether we can grow here, um, you know, sort of bottom up. Questions? Yes. Person operator draw logos because I could do something. <laughs> um, what's his name? Um, I actually. Here we are. Kartik Prabhu. Okay. We'll see. Okay. So if you have something, by all means, you know, add stuff to it. I think it's not in the web, strictly speaking, but I think it is uh, part of the larger cause that we have here. Thank you. And I'll see you all next year or uh, in time Same journey. Thank you. I am not fooling myself. My primary role here is so that you guys can keep typing on your demos. <laughs> Um, is it showing up? Yeah. Okay, so the two things that I did, um, uh, Tontek and I did not cross paths today on uh, working on the web page. So what I did was I just put together a quick Figma a sketch of the home page to give kind of uh, clearer wording and an introduction to the, you know, uh, indie.blog and so forth, as well as possible links to the, the how to pages we talked about yesterday. Very lightweight start, but I put it into the Etherpad notes. So, and what I love about Figma is that it, people can comment on the design. So, if anybody's interested in that, go to the, the Ethernet page and go from there. Uh, on a very personal level, this is actually, for most of you, very baby stuff, but I fully uh, indie, re indie webized <laughs> my site. Um, and uh, like an awful lot of, so the, and the way you can tell is that I, I have these little guys, oh, thank you. Um, I have these guys down here, right? Um, and um, what I loved about this was that nothing changed. And so the key thing for me was to keep, my feel is of a very slow blog. That's my style. My, my articles tend to be, like I said before, 1,800 words. They're fairly long. I did not want to clutter this up with bookmarks and RSVPs and likes, right? So the, my thing was to, um, A, make sure that my WordPress site showed just my articles, which required a plug-in. Thank you, WordPress. Um, but then I have a stream now, and if you can see the stream right here, the stream basically has all my indie content. So my photos, my note, bookmarks, I just made some sample ones to hold it. And this now is going to allow me to play with creating my own lightweight indie content, give it a, a parking place as I kind of play with it. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to make this work so easily and quickly. That was it. Thanks. Right. Uh, hello, I'm Marty McGuire. My URL, uh, the short URL is mmg.re. That'll get you to my website. Oh boy, that got very tiny. Okay. That's okay. Uh, I did a few different things, sort of random things today. Uh, this weekend I integrated Own Your Swarm so I could start doing check-ins with photos. And it does this really cool thing where if you're in a place with people, it sends along this complicated H card that says who was there with you when you checked in. Uh, I use static site uh, with Jekyll, and Jekyll's uh, tagging system doesn't grok this. In fact, it just falls over and dies. So uh, this this killed my site. So I um, I learned how to essentially beat Jekyll's tagging system to the punch and strip out that data before it renders uh, and move it somewhere else. So now I've got these nice like with so and so links, uh, and I feel smarter than Jekyll today, which is a rare and beautiful day. <laughs> Um, oh, this is a little tiny. Uh, another big thing I've been working on is uh, the This Week in the Indie Web sort of podcast. It's really just uh, me reading some of the wiki changes every week. Uh, but I started documenting my process for actually turning the generated newsletter into a script. My hope is that, and, and part of why I started this project 
is is to um, take what l is essentially just a big list of links to diffs and turn it into something human readable. Doing this by hand, taking like an hour, an hour and a half every week is is like my excuse to really dig in, but it's also my hope that I can automate some of this process so that the newsletter itself can spit out human readable summaries of things that have happened on the wiki. And so I think documenting this so that other people can take a look at my process will also help. So um, that's, that's under my user page. I'll send out a link to that uh, in the IRC if anybody wants it. Uh, I also did a dozen one-minute interviews today. Uh, thanks, everybody, who sat in with those, just answering the question, why did you get involved with IndieWeb? Uh, thanks to Chris Aldrich for uh, the suggestion. <laughs> and um, I'm looking forward to these. I'm probably going to put one in each of the next 12 uh, issues of the audio newsletter. And uh, the last thing, uh, Doug, Doug Beal had the best idea in the world, and he was having some trouble registering the domain. And I could not leave here uh, with that travesty uh, as, <laughs> and failure as a community. So we have sp spiderwebweddingring.ws, which will be a host for our new web ring shortly. <laughs> That's it. Can only spiders join that, or is it up to humans? Don't you, don't you test me, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Question. <laughs> I just will never remember how to type that. <laughs> so am I on here? Is this showing? Yep. Cool. So uh, I was struck by the fact that there were 2,500 uh, community sites in this group, and I have 1,000 some odd community sites in FedWiki, and I thought we ought to hook them together. And obviously the way to do that is with uh, the parts that uh, have been assembled to do that. Uh, today, I uh, hooked up, I, I should say Aaron and I hooked up the uh, quill to be able to post to Federated Wiki. Uh, wikis and blogs have always been a little, you know, uh, they have a little trouble because in a wiki there isn't the real notion of publish. And so what we did is we create a plugin in Federated Wiki that publishes and the event that says you're ready to publish is you take something that was written elsewhere. Here I wrote a blog post called iBlogger and you, uh, you drag it to the published site. So that is the event that publishes. And now the, uh, the count is up updated. But of course, the modern way to do that, and, and here I had a little page where, uh, let's see, work in progress, we call that MicroPub server endpoints for RSS plugin. And we've done that. Uh, here it only notices zero pages have been published, but that's because we're not using the full format yet, uh, the wiki format. But uh, this is the plugin. We're up to version 0.19, or 1.19. So we've done quite a few revs here today. Uh, and here are some posts uh, that were added to the end of that. In fact, this, uh, this last one, uh, 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 this is what it looks like in Quill. So we use Quill to post it. And uh, push the button, post, and there it went. So uh, success. Thank you. Right. Or what was the URL for that again? Sorry. Uh, that was org.asia.wiki.org. Uh, Thank you. And the page within that is MicroPub. Uh, cool. So, okay, I'm Grant. My normal domain is grant.codes. Uh, I was just been working a bit on my MicroPub uh, client chatbot. So it's posterchildbot.tpxl.io at the moment. I should get a good emoji domain for it. But, uh, I know, posterchild is pretty freaking good. Yeah, yeah, I use it for some other stuff as well. <laughs> right, so um, it's using uh, the Microsoft bot framework, so it automatically has given me a few options to just instantly create bots. So I've got the 
Facebook Messenger, Skype, Slack, and this web UI. Um, so specifically today, I updated it so it now supports um, deleting and undeleting posts and uh, sort of very basic uh, replacing properties to update the post. Uh, but my actual website doesn't support that yet, so I'm just going to demo it in here. And let's try deleting a post. So I'll jump to the Slack one. So this is like the authorization flow. Um, you, yeah, there's a lot of letters going on. Uh, so you get started, you put in your domain. So that was the Micropub one. And then it redirects you to, uh, oops, not that. It redirects you to my page and then you have to uh, paste back the code that you get. So it has all the uh, tokens and everything. So now I should be able to uh, just paste in this URL. And it's somewhat clever in that if you give it a URL, it can see that's a URL. And because I registered as that being my website, it knows that you want to update or delete. But if it was somebody else's website, you could then like, repost, uh, and some other things. So I will try the, what did I have? Delete. Dun, dun, dun. So it does say something went wrong, but it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, I can show posting if anybody wants, but uh, you can just try it out yourself. Cool. So how do, how do I get this? I want this. Uh, just go to that website, posterchildbots.tpxl.io, and you can just use it. All right, uh, this is what I want. So how soon do you have Mastodon support? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan LaCour, cleverdevil.io. I did two things today, one of which is actually doing something, and another is thinking about doing something. Um, the actual doing something was really simple. This was in my kind of like hour and a half um, right after lunch time. Um, so this is a known install on a little demo server I have, um, and it didn't support, known did not support the Micropub media endpoint um, before, but now you can actually run the configuration query, and it will return that it has a media endpoint, um, and the real question is, does it actually work? Um, so I'm going to do a test that I haven't done before, which is dumb at a demo, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, so it says it's going to work, and then I click upload, and it worked, and I can view the file on the site. Yeah! So no one now supports the, the media endpoint. Um, the other thing I did was I spent the afternoon kind of thinking about uh, the reading experience on the IndieWeb, and I have Slideware for you. So I hope you enjoy Slideware, because that's what you're getting. Um, I'm creating a thing called Together. Uh, so m m the the kind of idea behind this is that um, the puzzle is incomplete. We've got all these great building blocks. We've got standards like WebMention and Micropub. We've got WordPress and we've got Known, all of the wonderful sites that you've all built. We've got Quill. We've got Teacup. We've got lots and lots of cool things. Um, and we can create and publish and interact with each other. But uh, reading is kind of still not a great experience. There have been some really good um, starts on this. But um, I think the way that we read things now and the way people discover things now is more like streams, right, and timelines than it used to be like RSS readers, where it was more like email and inbox of stuff. Um, so the idea is to bring your indie web experience together, um, reading, creating, and interacting. Uh, and I hope to rely completely on other things to do all the hard stuff. Um, so micropub, uh, web mention microsub to handle everything else. Um, so this is kind of a quick view of what we, uh, Aaron Parecki and I, and uh, who else was in there with me? Grant was in there. Um, and we kind of sketched out an idea. Um, and the notion is you have channels, and you can kind of see it might look like with real content in it. This is from my website. Um, and you could have a stream of all the feeds that you follow, and you could go through and uh, interact with those things. I think in the short term, maybe just making it link off to Quill would be a great way to start. Uh, instead of trying to add a bunch of things that already exist. But that's the idea. And the great news about this is that it doesn't exist at all. 
It's just a picture. Um, but I created a, a GitHub repository which has a readme file in it. Um, just to inspire myself that that will be a good way to sh shame myself into trying to do something. So um, if you're interested in helping, maybe talk to me and we can see if this actually can be a thing we do. Um, it might not, but I'd love to work together with you on it. Okay. Hello, I'm Gregor. My website is gregorlove.com. I also have a domain that I've not done much with except for a little dev work, uh, gregoreatworld.com. And I decided to use it for my demo today. So, uh, bookpub, B K P U B, dot gregoreatworld.com. It's like web 2.5. I took out some of the vowels. Um, and we worked on, Jack and I worked on, he's going to show a little bit of a demo after this too, related to this. We worked on adding citations to Quill. Um, the idea is that it's really generic. It can basically be any URL. You know, it could be a, a URL for an academic article um, or a book um, or even a blog post. We have a status here. You can select uh, want to read, currently reading, or finished reading. And uh, Ultimately, we'll iterate on that. I mean, it could be any type of status that, you know, your site wants to support, you know, like I'm currently watching something. So hopefully it's extendable. And hopefully this works. All these properties are sent through. Um, my site does not really, uh, it just displays the summary. And hopefully this will work. So it should show the summary. Yes, want to read testing. Um, author's not coming through yet. Um, ideally, we'll also be able to like add the link in there and other stuff. And there's lots of ideas for the future. Um, we're thinking that you know this client could take a list of the things that you're currently reading, and you could just select it from a drop down. Then you could add a note. You know, I've gotten this far in this book, or here's some thoughts on wherever you are in the process. So that's it. All right, I'm Jack Jameson. Uh, my website's uh, jackjameson.net. And uh, I was working on getting uh, these, uh, the book pub stuff uh, displaying on my site. So uh, I've set up my site to, it's using the MicroPub uh, plugin for WordPress, and I've modified uh, my theme so that it pulls in the uh, post meta and gets uh, the author information and that also will then be a link to uh, you know, a site with more information about the book. So that's mostly what I was working on, the other side of uh, Gregor's project. Thanks. Cool. Um, oh, wow, they're on both screens. Um, I'm Lillian, my domain is anomalily.net, and um, I spend the entire day Tom Sawyering, um, Ryan, <laughs> David, and Aaron. Uh, thank you all very much for being my in person tech support. What's Tom Sawyering? Tom Sawyering means I just complained until people helped me and um, did releases and made things work to solve a problem. So uh, the problem I was having that I set out to fix was that maps were not displaying on my check-ins. Um, and this was due to a still pretty mysterious um, Google Maps API key issue that I was having because I was bringing the check-ins from Swarm in through Ift. So the solution uh, essentially ended up being to instead get Ryan to push a release of the MicroPub uh, WordPress plugin and then implement Own Your Swarm, which was like the 10,000 pound gorilla solution to what I thought was a really tiny problem. Um, but now I have these beautiful maps. And so this is an ift check-in. Um, mysteriously, the ift problem got solved 
by implementing Own Your Swarm, I think because it felt threatened and decided to behave itself. Um, however, this is what the check-ins now look like um, coming from Own Your Swarm. So you can see the difference between the ift one, which is using Google Maps, and this one is using Mapbox. Um, and this has all the H entry and then the link back, the syndication link to Swarm. And, oh, and the coolest part for me is that they have web mentions that tell you how I got points on Swarm, which I find particularly cool. So the thing I almost implemented was my current location pop up on my front page, um, but I do still, I have it on the footer. So that's what I did. That's not what I did. That's what I complained until other people did for me. It's a little big. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so uh, Lily mentioned uh, one of the things I worked on, but I'll start with, um, you know, it was a bit embarrassing to get up here and uh, yesterday and present a, uh, a new project that I was excited about and had no self-dog fooding for. So one of the first things I did today was take that you know, visualization of the social graph and put it on my website. So the, the totally kind of narcissistic, narcissistic self-centered view, here's you know, the part of the IndieWeb social graph centered at me, and this is just an embed of that uh, that tool I talked about, but it's um, navigable, uh, it's got some nice search. We'll say, how about Kevin Mark, since he's not here, we'll pour one out for him, and we can go find him up there, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got some nice uh, nice eye candy. So, um, so that's at snarf.org social graph. Uh, you all can use this, too. It's definitely embeddable. Um, the more interesting part is you know, you, when I when you go back and look at this data, and again, so anymap.org slash yourdomain.json, you all can look at this for yourselves. Um, people have been talking a lot about blog roles and web rings, and this thing, you know, you go down to the link section, and it's got all of these domains that you link to ordered by how many links there are. So we can take a stab at auto-generating blog roles or web rings kind of for everyone or for groups. And so that might be my next step on, on this page or something. A couple other small things, uh, like Lily mentioned, um, Micropod wasn't working with Own Your Swarm, so I added that, or uh, some of it was done, but I released it. And then lastly, mostly yesterday, but I did some more research on this. The uh, next thing I'm excited about is making IndieWeb talk to GNU Social, Mastodon, you know, OStatus, and then in the future, ActivityPub, uh, thanks to AJ uh, nudging me yesterday. So we have um, top-level, kind of, you know, high-level list of things that need to be built uh, inside this, this new bridge. And then also there were some UX warts where if you want to mention someone, do you have to mention like, here's the bridge.com slash them instead of just mentioning them uh, or vice versa. And we found some little things we can stick into the endpoints to maybe get rid of that and make it feel native. So there are some uh, some good ideas there. Anyway, thank you all. Um, so I did two, two little, oh, my name's Jim Pick. Um, I did two little things today. Um, first thing really doesn't have a lot to do with IndieWeb, but it's easy to demo, and it's, everybody here sort of likes Rube Goldberg type of setup. So I have a Amazon IoT button, and I, I can press the button. It starts blinking here, it takes a couple of seconds, and if it works, um, it updates Firebase. So it's cool. jumping from one serverless framework to another serverless framework. And then I can chain that onto other things. So um, interesting demos in the future for that one. Um, the one that's perhaps going to be more indie web related is I've been experimenting with the DAT project and the Beaker browser for doing um, distributed web. And um, I, I talked about this yesterday, but I, I had I made a little dat website 
that you, you pull this out and it's like BitTorrent, like it can run off a whole bunch of different servers at once and it's all keyed off of, it, you get a number like this, a big long number, but you can have this data on hundreds of sites potentially. Um, I'm working for a podcast startup. We're going to be generating lots and lots and lots of data, and I need to move it around to lots and lots and lots of servers. But this would work for static hosting for indie websites as well. So this could be a really, really easy publishing platform. Um, is there a .dns, or do you always have to pass There is actually a .dns. You can... Thank God. They just did this like a couple of weeks ago. Okay, there we go. And so you can actually uh, use your SSL certificate and somehow it links it together. You can get like friendly things and then, you know, if I go to dat.jimpic, if you use using Beaker Browser, there's a P2P version available. Okay. Oh, but it it's, got some, it's got some interesting ideas for censorship resistance. Like if you have your site published on multiple URLs, and say so a few of them get taken down or if you get to pay the bill or something, it's on multiple places, people can still find it. If it gets taken down and people have, uh, say, uh, service workers in the web browser, you know, you can, it's got sort of interesting um, things that way. But it's just it's just a useful um, thing you might not know about me is I used to run kernel.org and I had to maintain uh, the mirror, mirror. One of the biggest thing with kernel.org is they have this network of mirrors, and there's like a hundred different fallen tier servers that had like distributions of Linux primarily, and I had to centralize it. And that was just a lot, a lot of work. So I'm just really, really excited about this sort of stuff. Um, so um, right now, like you can take these URLs and you put them into different programs, and they'll make copies of them. What I have is I have a bunch of servers now in a bunch of different data centers, and I want to be able to just, when I make a new one of these, and I'm going to probably be making hundreds of these, I want that to have like a whole bunch of replicas all done for me at once. So that's what I did today. So, so this doesn't really look like a whole lot, but um, so these are different websites here. They all have different hashes associated with them. Um, and I can publish a list of all the different hashes I want mirrored into one file. And then uh, I can just um, edit the file here. So I've commented out this line. And this, this, this window here, it's probably a little small, that's running uh, on a Microsoft Azure data center. This one's a mirror running on my laptop. So if I just... Uh, Save that. You see, it'll bump, bump the version number, and all of a sudden, I've just mirrored that site in lots of places. So I could have like a dozen of these things listening to this file, and you know, and that that could not just be a couple of files. That could be like hundreds of gigabytes of data. So I'm, I'm excited about this, and I think this would be a nice core of doing a really cheap, um, basically free hosting platform for indie web type stuff. So. I've never actually plugged my laptop into an external monitor before, so let's cross our fingers here. Okay, so uh, I spent a couple hours uh, thinking about uh, doing uh, Pos and Pesos for reading, so like library thing and Goodreads, but uh, determined that was out of the scope of today. Um, so what I did accomplish today is I've been checking in long and hard this weekend, and now it's displaying on my blog as well. So here we are. Um, so now if everyone else wants to go out and get their own uh, domain name, perhaps uh, you can... <laughs> Oh look, it's available. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it.
Oops. So, I didn't actually get to the indie web part of what I was doing, but it's still uh, interesting, I think, and uh, that's the next step, and maybe um, other people might want to use this too. Um, uh, sorry. Sorry, what's your name and your website again? Uh, sorry, uh, so I'm Sebastian, Sebastian Kipper, sebastian.kip.pe. Um, I can't mirror this for some reason. Uh, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> trying to mirror the screen, but it's not. Is that two extra screens? Like I see one extra one, uh, and I press mirror, but it doesn't do anything. All right. Drag the window over. Try. Oh, is that mirror? No. Ah, oh, this is harsh. No, I can can only see it on that side. All right, sorry. I tried tabbing through tabs. Um, so, um, so I looked at the service. Um, so it's, this is an open source um, alternative for if this then that or Zapier. So it's basically a Rails app that runs and can uh, run agents that collect data and then uh, send post requests or my ideas for it to send micropub. Um, so you could basically, as long as, um, so you could, a any anything that it can uh, basically look for, um, you can then configure to send micropub. Um, and I set out to do this um, because I want to sync my Strava rights um, to my website as trips. Um, let me check. All right, so... Right, so I, um, so I created this um, Strava service, and um, I got it working with OAuth. So now you can basically auth you can uh, set up the the OAuth keys and click a button, and then you have your stuff. And um, so you can see the agents here is um, yeah, there's like check Strava acti activities. And then you would combine this with something like um, send micropub, which would be an extra agent. So agents can uh, be receivers or senders. And then you just say, um, check Strava activities here, and maybe post to Twitter and post the micropub. Um, so the part that's missing, so this is basically working. And uh, you can see one of the activities uh, here. Well, so it's getting the, the activities, and unfortunately, oh. <laughs> sorry, I have to <laughs> look around the corner. Uh, right. Oh, this seems to be the mobile. Okay, so now the challenge is that this is the data for one activity and I have to somehow come up with tags and microformats for all this stuff. <laughs> um, because it's a, a trip like this is not really a trip from A to B with like in a car and just the GPX track, but you actually have like um, all kinds of extra data from all your devices that you use to record. And then you have the, you have the track, you have like elevation, um, and then you also have segments with the little, you know, extra data sets, and I have no idea yet how to actually mark that up. But yeah, so if someone, so the next part that I would do is uh, send micropub, so you could not just do it for Strava things, but anything. And yeah, if I, I put it online, and if someone wants to help, um, and also help me figure out how to uh, transform that into markup, um, I'd appreciate that. <laughs>
Ah, there we go. Uh, Bad to worse. Okay. Could I uh, borrow your computer? Sure. I lost my network connection. And Looks like it's working. Okay, I'm uh, Tom Brown. Here's Tom with the weather.com. I uh, learned yesterday about uh, Vox Pelli's um, uh, website, uh, um, Micropub to um, GitHub um, service or project, and that really helped a lot tremendously. Uh, for um, doing Micropub for this first time, and then just um, using Quill to send location data, and um, and then you know have it post to the footer of, of my uh, blog posts. So just kind of beginner stuff, but uh, that's what I did today. Thanks. Did you want to go? Oh yeah. Uh, so the first thing that I tried to do was um, add a uh, photo or add an H card with a photo to uh, uh, to my site and resend my RSVP and uh, that got nowhere uh, or at least it I resent the RSVP and it said it was accepted and I didn't see the photo show up um, so that made me sad uh, but uh, I did get this working the uh, the top section is uh, this is V code with the uh, commas removed, although in this case there are not any commas that would have been required. Uh, there could have been, can you see that? Yeah, there could have been one right here uh, or not. Uh, but if there any would be removed and then the code to process this would add the commas back in. And then uh, that uh, gets parsed uh, as, as a V object and inserted into a larger structure, which the, the HTML head and body and then rendered as, a, as HTML text. And so this is just a building block that uh, will become uh, other stuff later. That's it. All right. So one of my long-standing itches, and I've been keeping track of, or things I've been working on, actually, it's beyond an itch. I'm Tontek Chalik, my site's Tontek.com, but I will show you uh, where I've been keeping track of the stuff I'm trying to work on on my uh, CMS, as it were, and I use that term very loosely. <laughs> it's more like a markup management system than a content management system. Anyway, so this is a very long list of things I am working on, roughly sorted in priority order, because things just keep getting added, the list grows. And then if I don't know where to add it, it goes into the itches list of like, yeah, I would like to fix that someday. So today, I decided to work on something very close to the top, which is event posts, which is what you should do. I didn't want, and so uh, this is something I've been working on for quite some time, and I have, I think, the minimum viable event posts on my site now. So this is my homepage right now, live. 
and I posted an event for this week's Homebrew Website Club at Mozilla SF. And it doesn't look much very different right now when you're looking at it there, because I literally ran out of time to get creative with the CSS. Uh, I did manage to make it at least not break and look somewhat normal, uh, which literally was just like minutes ago. Uh, but if you click on the permalink, um, then you might see some a few small details revealing the fact that it's different. There is uh, the permalink is of the start date of the event, not today. And that's a very uh, different thing for events. But it still says when the event was created down here below at the bottom. And that's enough y'all can read that. So very rudimentary display uh, for now. However, if you look behind the scenes, which you can use the, the nice pin13.net service to do. Um, actually, let's copy that. Look at the permalink. You will see, and this is, um, uh, this is actually just JSON, but this is what Firefox now does. If you load JSON, it shows you a nice little JSON viewer with, you know, you can like twiddle things open and closed and stuff like that. Um, the top level object is an H event, not an H entry. So that literally is an event permalink. It's got an author, it's got a location, an organizer, name, summary, uh, URL, UID, start and end dates, as well as the publish and updated dates. So, and then the contents of the whole thing. So that's all there. The interesting difference between the PHP and Python microformats parsers, the Python one sees the top level type as both H event and H entry. So that's, that would be a bug in the Python parser. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I have a, I have class. I'll show you. I'll just go ahead and view source there to show you what's going on. So there is class equals, there you go, post h entry h dash event, as dash event. Um, a microformats2 parser, if it sees a microformats2 root class, it's supposed to ignore any back compact classes on that item. Oh, cool. okay. And so that, it should be ignoring this. If it's not, then that's a bug. And yeah, I tend to put edge cases like that in my live code because I like to break things, apparently. <laughs> um, but the harder part was to actually have it show up here in the feed. I don't know if I'm going to actually have it show up when I create the event or have to, or like make that a separate post uh, like, oh yeah, here's an event, go check it out kind of thing, um, and then have the event only show up when it becomes the time for the event. That's a design decision to decide. But the, the thing that's new here, which I think may screw up some readers, if they were depending, if they were treating um, H feeds, so this is my home page, so the top level object is an H card. So if you scroll down, eventually you will find the H feed embedded in the H card. There we go. Um, now my H feed is a composite H feed that has an H event as well as, here I can twiddle that close, H entries. So if you are building a reader that's reading an H feed um, and you're iterating through the children, you cannot necessarily depend on them all being H entries. It could be an H event, it could be any kind of object just being tossed into the feed and that's, that's uh, by design. But we haven't had very many real world examples of that to date. So here's, here's one now. So if you have an HVD parser reader, see what, see what it does. Um, this is live. There's a permalink. It's receiving web mentions that are getting, going to webmention.io. Next steps would be to make it look more like an event and maybe even show RSVPs via some JavaScript embed or something. I don't know if any of the existing web mention JavaScript embeds support showing RSVPs. Does anyone know? Like I know they show comments and likes. I bet Box Billy does. Okay. So there you go, minimum viable events on my site.
Hey, my name is Anton. My site is podvaznikov.com. Uh, I'm actually like building my own personal CMS personal slash personal wiki for for, for my own site. And uh, so what I did today, uh, I added support uh, for my CMS to generate JSON feeds for 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 my, for my for my blogs. So if I create if I create a new post I did that. So I have a I have a post and hopefully uh, yeah. I have a feed and my feed should have my feed should have five items right now. The last one hello which which I just added. Yeah it was it was pretty easy to implement the JSON feed which is the same as RSS pretty much and uh, eight item One, one, one small feature for, for, for today. That's it. What was that CMS you're using? That's my, my own one. Oh, nice. Oh. My wire choices here. I have, no, don't have one of those. I think I have one of those. It should, oh, there it is. It flickered. Oh. Oh, is it doing that dual screen thing again? Okay. Yes. So second screen instead of mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Now I have to fiddle with cloning settings? Okay. I hate doing that during a demo here. Let's see. Here we are. Show your existing view on both displays. There we are. That should solve the problem. Okay. Well, well that's not nothing. So, uh, let's see. So once again, my name is David Chansky. Um, I am a WordPress user. I am unapologetic about it, unlike so many people. So uh, over the course of the last day, I've done a few things. Um, some of them involve being the Huckleberry Finn to somebody's Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yes. nice. Somebody wanted me to paint the fence. I painted the fence. <laughs> I appreciate it. But let's see, what have I done? Um, after the session this morning, I basically changed what I planned on doing and wanted to make it so within the Bridgie plugin for WordPress, you could actually register for all of the Bridgie options. So it doesn't look very pretty at the moment, but if you actually click, let's say, register for Twitter, it'll ask you automatically, authorize Bridgie to use your account. Oops, your screen. Did I? Yes, there we are. And then you, of course, authorize it. It will redirect you back to that same page with a lovely little message you have suggested. And down at the bottom, you can't register for Twitter anymore because all you have is this little Twitter link, so it wipes it out. Doesn't look very pretty, but pretty can come later. Work now, pretty. Um, also, the original project I had for the weekend was working on improving location support, which I've been doing for a while. And um, I didn't do anything particularly um, useful this weekend other than try to make it easier for people to actually see all of the options I created. So this is the new box that automatically, if you press this button, figures out that we're allegedly at the brew house and tower offices, which are we? Apparently we are. Um, and then if you show detail, you can see that it is figured out that somehow that this is at 1120, what is it, Kush? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Uh, 
I heard the recording on the trolley. Yeah, it's our right. trick. It's our trick. Yes, I just well, yeah. Natives. So I've created an example post here with it um, from a demo earlier when I was showing how something else worked. So here is me allegedly bookmarking a post by Aaron with a map under it. So there's a map and a location. There are also a bunch of bug fixes that people wanted, but you can't really show a bug fix. It's they were fixed, though. But they were appreciated. Yes. <laughs> so I'll leave now. <laughs> Friend of making new, better UI for bridging and relegating it to pure plumbing, I'm all for that. Yeah. Like, do more of that. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. So it's officially endorsed by the Bridger creator. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting that into the readme. <laughs> <laughs> Not a stop. David, let's make sure that you and I connect both. It sounds dirty. Yeah. If you feel like you're saying maybe a word you shouldn't say, then you're saying it right. <laughs> so it's not like this ball is made of rubber filaments. No. <laughs> we also have Phelan Street and Gleason Street, which you would not think is pronounced Gleason. I can't actually see that on my screen. Yeah. Which is kind of making life difficult. Is this your new website? It is. I just can't see it on my screen, so I'm. Well, it looks great. <laughs> Let's see you the... made this today? You probably need to set up mirroring on. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember how to do. I know how to do it. Or Gene knows how to do it. I got the display screen out. Arrangement. Fast, uh, yeah. I, Boom. I keep wanting to get rid of tabs and then I keep appearing again. They're like turbos. Can you see what you want to see? Yeah. Not bankruptcy. No. Close the window and never look back. <laughs> I do. Aaron likes it. Kind of works. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I kind of rebuilt my site. Um, a lot of it's kind of hard coded right now, which I don't necessarily want to keep that way. But it's there, and I'm starting to use some of the different micro formatting tags that I've been learning about. So they're starting to exist. Um, and so on my old site, if you go to a page and then you hit the refresh button, it doesn't work. <laughs> or if you just type in this URL and try to go to it, it doesn't work. You can only get to it by going to the home page and clicking on the links. Um, but now you can like go to a page. And then, and then you can refresh, and it stays on the page, <laughs> which I'm pretty excited about. Um, uh, this is beautiful design. So I have like the homepage. And it fits. Can you click on the menu one more time, please? <laughs> I did all the responsive things, which was kind of a pain because I have everything like back and forth, but it's working. And yeah. Um, so I did this, and then these ones are all like the event things um, for all the different conferences and hackathons I've gone to. And I added blog posts, and I put my code portfolio stuff up there. And because apparently I code a lot, I got the this thing to work so I can actually do it, and it'll actually send me an email now. And I did it without using PHP, which was pretty exciting. That's not real. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think that's it. Look at all the things. Most of it. I, you're very productive. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all day mixing the map, and I didn't even do any of the work. <laughs> I had all the routing work, so the pages yeah. that existed, they were just blank, so it was just a lot of Did anybody ever solve for USB-C uh, up here? USB-C power uh, for uh, projecting? Yeah. It's only my <laughs> second time using this computer. Right now. <laughs> this is a USB C A to C. Or I could just use somebody's browser. It's not really. Oh, NPM thing, no Oh, that's actually cool. So you didn't use Node, which I'm not. Node is fine, but I didn't use PHP. I've never gotten a form working without having to do PHP.
No, actually, that's one of the beauties of. Maybe it wasn't plugged all the way in before. Oh, oh. things are and happening. You're good. Run away. Yes. <laughs> so what I um, wanted to say it was the opposite of what I said I was going to do yesterday. Um, I did not work on my micro dot blog CSS because I got fascinated and and down the rat hole of, of WordPress blog. So yesterday I had nothing. Today I have this, and it's not much except it also has the indie web plugin, and so I have things that I didn't even know existed are working with this now, and I was able, uh, another one of my goals was to log into the wiki so I could change events, uh, and I did, even though it was last night's event, I went in and, and added uh, some of the band names, just, but in order to do that, I had to have the rel equals me yeah. stuff set up, and I that was all um, new to me, so that's set up now. Um, uh, what I want my what I want to go forward with is um, is uh, getting the microblog stuff, uh, um, the feed embedded here. So when I post on micro, I'll have a page that that mirrors um, the page, which is this, and uh, just for you know completion sake to have everything available, but. Uh, I'm going to continue to to blog short blog posts um, as my main blog for as long as I can stand it on micro dot blog using the 280 character um, limit, um, and then figuring out where the posts are going to go, uh, figuring out how to make that part work will be another piece of it. So what I'm now calling macro blog, um, where the regular length posts will go. But I'm really happy about everything. Thanks to everybody who answered all my questions and got me started with stuff that I know that I need to show other people how to do. So um, thanks very much for, for everything, you all. Thank you. I still have some, some codes. I mean, I'll always have codes for, you know, if you want to contact me later for invites for micro.blog um, if you're interested in it or if you have questions. If they're technical, you can ask me, and I'll just say, Manton, please answer this question. And <laughs> that will pop you up to the higher up in the queue. <laughs> oh, we do. Look at that. All right. Number in the corner. Oh, that's notifications. All right. So, Ben, word.io. Um, I don't look at my notifications. What do you want? I apologize, I apologize for messing with people's... Um, Triggered. Yeah, exactly right. Um, that's not what I'm showing. So, the, <laughs> um, so I did a bunch of invisible stuff today, which was kind of frustrating. So I, up, I updated a whole bunch of JavaScript. I changed the way that web mention replies are ordered on posts. I updated, uh, I fixed events uh, to better display RSVP comments and order the RSVP comments. Uh, I fixed my incoming uh, web mentions for RSVP, all of which is great and well needed and all of this, but kind of dull. Honestly, and I was a bit frustrated about this about an hour ago, and I was like, you know, I've been using this same site theme for a really long time now, and people have been people have been complaining uh, that you know, known doesn't have any themes, and I was like, well, actually, no, I want to build something for me and not really for the community. I just want to build something for me. So this is what I did. Uh, it's called Romana, and. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, it's a little bit. You know, it's you gotta you gotta you gotta have your own style a little bit, right? You gotta have some rotations. You gotta, you know, you gotta have. Like, I wanted to have a. I wanted to have a style that wasn't going to. Uh, Look like any social network, right? And I think we can all agree that that's that's what I ended up with. MySpace. 
It's MySpace, <laughs> right? And that's. CSS for that uh, link underline? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> No, you can all use that. Everyone should use it. Um, let me just show off one more thing about this theme, because this theme is really good. Um, so we've got the bars here. <laughs> yeah. So let's do this. Demoing my beautiful new site theme. So fly. <laughs> Makes me so happy. That's all I got. Um, uh, I just can't see how many notifications you have because <laughs> <laughs> you did that intentionally. <laughs> 1573. And of course, one earlier too, so okay. all the old plugins still work, so it's all good. Wait, it's chicken plugin. It doesn't matter. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I want that CSS. Should I go? Go make it yes. yourself. Aaron's turn. It's so good. Suddenly I realized that it's my thing. So, uh, I'm Aaron, AaronPK.com. Uh, hopefully I don't like start a feedback loop by having the live stream on my laptop while also recording. It's We'll see what happens. Um, so continuing in the theme of uh, things that I fixed that I didn't have to do any work for because somebody else fixed the problem, um, my micro.blog was not updating since uh, about almost a month ago now. Um, but thankfully, it wasn't my bug. And <laughs> Manton fixed it over the weekend. So thanks, Manton. Um, and now my posts are back on micro.blog, um, except there are no photos, which I think is my bug, so I'll fix that later. Uh, something about the photo not showing up in the content of the RSS feed that's being imported to here, I'll figure it out later. I had grand vi uh, grand plans for, for what I was gonna do uh, this weekend, and I uh, got almost none of them done. Uh, but I have a really nice start to one of them, which is um, I wanted to make a, uh, a uh, way to interact with posts from within Quill so right now, when I'm on um, Ben's site <laughs> and I want to uh, favorite this post, for example, I have these bookmarklets. Um, so I can click this button to reply, which is great. Um, but it's it, they're all in a bookmarklet. And it would be nicer if I had a way to do that from just a single interface. And also, um, I'm trying to work towards building a, a, a full reader. Uh, so I figured one of the one of the small steps I, is I could create one bookmarklet that would re-present other people's posts within Quill. They would then give me inline buttons uh, to be able to, with one click, favorite or reply or repost uh, or RSVP. And um, I got exactly this far with it, which, uh, well, let me pull in Ben's post because it'll look a little better. So it parses the post, and we can see that I don't escape HTML when I'm outputting that, because this is just debugging. And, um, and then that's, that's the end. Now I get, there's an error there, so I have to keep going after that. Um, so it's a start. Um, the other thing I started was um, uh, I wanted to post all of the photos I took yesterday as an album on my website instead of as an album on Flickr. And I already have album support in my site, but it's just really awkward to create the posts that it takes to actually post them. So um, the main problem being that uh, when I post a photo, it will always, if, if, if I make a post, if the post contains a photo, it always goes into this slash photos list. And I don't want all of the individual photos within an album to show up on my homepage and just like take over the stream. So I need a way to say, I'm making a post. Please don't include it in any feeds yet, because I'm going to make an album out of them later. Um, and I did most of that work. And I didn't, uh, actually, I think, it's, I think it's done. I just didn't actually launch it and test it live. But I tested it locally. Here's my example. Uh, here's my photos feed, which is got my actual photos. But then here's my list where it shows all the posts. And there's a photo in here that is not in my photos feed. Um, so that was progress. Um, what I did actually do 
today and finish uh, was a lot of very small bug fixes for various tools other people were using. So uh, not a lot of visible things, but uh, it, had, it had effects that propagated elsewhere. So I'm OK with that outcome. Um, so that is, that is the end for me. Everybody, so I guess that's it. Um, demos? It for demos. <gasps> it was very productive. Oh, oh, oh Martin wants to demo. Oh, <laughs> I'm having some trouble with the screen, but let me see if I can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we see you there. Give me one second. Can you want to talk to us while we're uh, getting set up? Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Introduce yeah. yourself. Awesome. So I'm Martijn, uh, Zach not in chat for everyone who hasn't noticed yet. Let's see if I can share my screen. I have no idea whether this will work. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Martijn okay. has a habit of uh, wikifying our etherpads to our wiki pages. So give us a round of a hand for that. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I, I have no idea what you people are seeing. I only get black back, so... Um, seeing your chat now. We'll see. Too much information. You should, you should see my website. Yes, <laughs> yes we see your website. And we see your desktop. Can I okay. minimize this? Ah, that's better. So here's my website. My website looked differently uh, two hours ago. Oh, yeah. I redid it completely. My website first focused on just having my contact information really quickly. I think inspired by something Tantec worked on um, to have quick access to contact information from a cell phone. Uh, but I wanted to show more information. Mostly I thought there's a lot of personal information about me that is on Facebook, but not on my own website. So I want to put it on my own website. Um, which is the too much information column. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I expect that column to grow. Um, the getting in touch is still there. Most of them are clickable. WhatsApp should become clickable if you're using Android, possibly. Link may work, maybe not. I can't test that. Uh, otherwise, everything has been micro formatted. We can make that a word. So let's use the php.microformats.io. Thank you, Shane, for doing microformats.io. And parse this. So we'll see that the entire the entire website is an H card. I have an address. Well, I have two H address objects embedded. Um, and then we get to the fun stuff. So I have my time zone. My current time zone is in the H card. Uh, nickname, gender identity I edit, sex I edit, relationship status I edit, because I found that in the microformats wiki. <laughs> in, interested in, which I think maybe one or two other people were using according to the microformats wiki, but I'm putting it in here because it's on my Facebook. Uh, sexual orientation, a lot of URLs, uh, two telephone numbers, and then my pronouns, which I hope other people will follow me in doing and something i hope to trip up some parsers on is that my birthday is exact to the minute <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope your parsers aren't just looking for a day <laughs> by the way so is mine i think <laughs> no I, I think i have a post for it somewhere mm -hmm. I yeah sure if i made that public or not I like the birthday <laughs> countdown. I yeah. like that too. No idea. I have to go. I'm not. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I was missing is a uh, microformat to mark up the languages that I speak. Um, I saw someone brought it up on the wiki, and there is no brainstorm on it and no test format, so I might just have to go and invent that one. Nice. <laughs> I do have it to the minute. Good time. 
that's it. That's all I got through today. Awesome. And also, thank you so much for note-taking and everything else virtually during yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah.